faculty and uh, finding some peace and music as we go forward in this rather challenging year that we've already started out in. I am Elisa Magajon, the Senior Education Manager for HGO Co. here at Houston Grand Opera. And it is my pleasure to welcome you into this space where we are learning with our high school students. They were a mix of juniors and seniors. We work monthly with a guest artist to uh, explore and, and evolve on what we are doing in our voice classes. So in our voice lessons, if you are a high school junior or sophomore, we will be opening up applications at the end of this month. So please check us out at hgo.org and you can uh, apply to be part of this program. Applications will be open through March, through the end of March. Um, you just need to have the urge to sing, the uh, will to commit to um, studying voice in the same way that these students are. All information will be found online. We invite you to join us next month on February 6th for our next master class. And um, I am so excited to bring in Miss Nicole Heaston, who is a huge favorite of us at HGO. She's appeared with many opera companies throughout the world, Metropolitan Opera, San Francisco, Dallas, Washington National, LA, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, in the crazy year of 2020, she has been one of those stars that has just taken the year by the reins and um, I encourage you all to subscribe to her Purple Robe series online. She's been doing amazing work there. Um, with all the extensive work that she's done with HGO, it is very exciting that the next appearance we'll see her in is just around the corner on January 22nd. We will live stream the Giving Voice with Lawrence Brownlee and Friends who sing opera, gospel, and standards. This will premiere on Marquee TV as well as being streamed with HGO. So please make sure that you check that out. I would like to invite Ms. Nicole Heaston into the space now, as she will give us a little insight on what to expect from today's class. Please welcome Ms. Nicole Heaston. Hello, hi, I'm so happy to be here today. How are you? We're, we're so excited for you, I'm great. How are you doing? Good, I'm looking forward to this. This is the second masterclass I've done with uh, with your group. And I remember being so impressed the very first time I worked with these singers. I sat there and was like, I don't have anything to say, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm looking forward to it. And I'm really looking forward to it in this virtual setting and getting a chance to see how these young singers are growing and what they're doing. So I'm excited. Thank you. Is there anything that uh, you would like to tell our online listening audience of um, what they should be looking at, like what is a master class? What are, when you approach a master class, what are some of the things that you contribute and think about when you're hearing students for the first time? Well, master class is very interesting situation because you're an outsider coming in for the first time hearing young students. And of course they're working with their own teachers, their own coaches, they're working on various things that their teachers are trying to fix and make them to become a better singer. But I, as an outsider, I come in and I see the things that, what can I help them with that they can take and build upon within the 20 minutes that I have to talk to them, whether it's talking about their breath support or the way they sh they're shaping their vowels or their connection to the music. Um, so it, it, so it's more so I come in like as, you know, as a little polisher at the end, you know, <laughs> to, to come in and see the little things that I'm like, oh, you could probably work on this because you know, voice teachers work on things in the long term. I look on things where this can work on and their teacher can grab on this and, and move forward with this in the future. So just to give them little nuggets to work with. Fantastic. Well, I can't wait to hear what those nuggets are. I think we're ready to bring on our first student. We'll have Jude Watt, our tenor, join us. Jude, if you don't mind uh, introducing yourself and your piece, and then we'll let you get started. Hello, uh, my name is Jude Watt, and today I will be singing Oh Mistress Mine by Roger Quilter. Oh Mistress Mine, where are your own? Oh, stay and hear your 
true love's coming that can sing both high and low, trip no further, and pretty sweeting, Jenny's ending lovers meeting, every wise man's son doth know. What is love, tis not hereafter, present mirth, not present laughter. What is come, me still unsure, in delay there lies no plenty. Then come kiss me, sweet and twenty. Youth's a stuff will not endure, not endure. Mistress, mind where I Beautiful job, Jude. That was lovely. You know, I'm sitting here, I'm listening to you sing and I love the tone of your voice and I'm a huge Disney fan and all I'm thinking is like, he needs to be a Disney prince. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful sound. Now, one thing I wanted you to do, cause I've, the tone of your voice is so beautiful, but I want you to relax your body. Cause there was a lot of, there was a lot of muscle, like this actually stayed very calm, but it was all in your physicality where I want you to stand as still as possible and release your hands, release your arms and just mistress mine. Because I wanted that first, that mine, because I felt like you kind of reached up to that mine. When you're singing, oh, mistress mine, I want you to think of that high G when you're singing, oh, mistress mine. So when you take your breath, have that space for that G in the G before you start, oh, mistress, oh, mistress mine. And then keep the, keep that, keep that space all the way till you get to roaming so that it doesn't go, oh, mistress mine, da, 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 da. Oh, mistress mine, da, 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 da. You see what I'm saying? Where it stays high but I want your body to be loose. So I want you to start that over for me again, completely loose. You know, I don't want you to give me, I, in things, what I really liked is that you were giving me a lot of emotion. You connected to what you were saying, which I appreciate it. I want to strip that away for just right now because you're good at that and just relax. And I just want to get that voice lined up where it's all super legato, but has the space of that high G throughout that entire phrase, okay? Mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, stay until your true love's coming That can sing both high and low Okay, I think I know what, what it is. When you go to, oh, Mistress Ma, I want you to stay on that all vowel just a little bit longer than you want to. Mistress mine with roaming. Give me more vowel. And I think that it'll give me just because what you did was great. You gave me exactly what I asked for. So now I want you to add on to that. Oh, oh, mistress mine. Give, give me that diphthong and that in much later than you would want. So I can hear mine. Da -de -da -da -da. Okay, one more time. Mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, stay and hear your true love's coming. Much better. Now, this is one thing that I thought was going to be tricky. Mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, say that make, get a, make sure you get a good breath and sing. Oh, stay and hear. So connect, stay and 
stay on here and sing that air. Because I think that's where I got my Disney Prince in there. My Disney Prince was in there with the list. Stay on here. Got a little poppy. So just stay on here. So keep that in alignment. It's the same thing I said with the G that you know you're going to sing that, that E. So have this, oh, stay on here. So that it's all in the same placement. And so it says, oh, stay on here. You hear the difference? Okay, one more time. Uh, from the beginning or just from that part right there? Whatever, whatever's easiest for you. I know you're dealing with a track. Mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, stay and hear your true love's coming. That can sing both high and low. Trip no further, pretty sweeting. Journeys and in lovers meeting. Every wise man's son doth know. Smart boy, Jude, you did what I asked. <laughs> oh, the only one where you would do, oh, stay and hear my true, true loves. Watch out, you, you, you're really jazzy and bluesy on there. <laughs> but that was the only one you did out of that. I was looking, because when you're doing your leaps, you're kind of giving me that look, a little scoop up to it, where I wanted it to be not, have the legato, but it, you know, put that L on the higher note and not the no, true loves, true loves. But that was the only one. The rest of them were really good, smart. All right, let's, let's keep going from there. From where you left, we stopped. What is loved is not hereafter. Present birth of present laughter, what to come is still unsure. In delay there lies no time plenty. Then come kiss me, sweet and twenty. Youth's a stuff will not in. Okay, we've gone back to now. I know I've told you a lot. We've gone back to that hand directing those high notes. Like when you're saying, da, 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 da. <laughs> it's so weird doing this virtually because if I was there, I'd, I'd take your hand and put it down. <laughs> so when, when, cause I want you to release that tension because what that is, is that, cause the thing is your notes are there. Do not be concerned if they're not. Cause I, your body is saying, is it gonna be there? And it's beautiful and it is there. So you don't, you, I want that arm down. I want your body relaxed. I want you to sit there. And in fact, start back at that second verse. And when you start back, I want you to breathe. And I kind of want you just like kind of to move your body like you're a little bit of jelly. Cause I want all of that loose. All right, um, as I'm singing or? As you're singing, you can da, da, da. not enough where you're getting yourself out of alignment where you can't sing, but just like you're like a, a bobblehead. Where your your head and body is like a little bobblehead where you can just be like da, 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 da. so that therefore you're not stopping doing this. Yes. Try that. No worries. No, you're fine. What is loved is not hereafter. Present words are present laughter. What so calm is still unsure. In delay there lies not plenty. Then come kiss me, sweet and twenty. Youths of stuff will not endure, not endure. 
endure. That sounded looser to me. And like I said, I don't want you doing that on stage. That's ridiculous. <laughs> but I just want you to be conscious of like, even if you just move your head from side to side, just gently, like not, you know, not so much of this, but just da, da, da. So then we make sure that all of this is loose. Cause when you did that, I noticed there were times where I could see your arm wanting to come out a little bit and give, give it a little help. And then you check yourself and you'd bring it back in. It's all about you tapping into your body and looking in the mirror. When you're looking in the mirror and just make sure that you are as relaxed as you can possibly be, because the more relaxed you are, the freer your sound is. Because you have a beautiful voice and beautiful line. I want to hear more. Let's do some more. And do it this time instead of, you know, all of this, just give me just a little bit of the head moving just a little, because I want that list. Because you because you kept this going, but like your head would stop on you, which I can understand. So just keep this kind of still and just... Da, 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 so that we know that all of this is relaxed because when this is all relaxed when your shoulders and your neck and your your body is relaxed your breath can can flow through your body easier than if it's trying to do this because all of your muscles are in tension and you don't have a lot of tension but you are putting it through your arms so i want you to just start just uh, just as loose as possible okay. um just continue it because I only got like one more line. No, no, but no, continue where we're at. We're good. Mistress mine, where are you Okay, I want to do Mistress Mine. I want to fix that because you've uh, the other ones like love and all stuff. We're so, but Mistress Ma, I want to hear just Mistress Mine. Okay, just that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when I when when I want you to sing it, and you don't have to play it with the music or anything, I just want you to. You're singing every note before, which is really good, Mistress Ma. I want you to just stay on that. Just give me a nice Ma. Mistress Mine. Okay, you're going more mine. Nice, nice, nice ah vowel. Mistress Mine. One more time. Mistress Mine. Okay, I'm trying to see what's going on. Okay. Mistress mine. Now think, now think, just give it to me. You're giving them, and I want to hear some verbal because it says like Mistress mine, like you're holding it. And I wanted to, I want to have vibrato in it. I want to Mistress mine. One more time. Mistress mine. Okay, finish. Do the, do it, and do the entire phrase. What's wrong? I see that face. What's going on? Well, um. You want me to add more vibrato, but uh, personally, I feel like if I add more, then my voice is just gonna like give out as I'm doing the vibrato. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know how to. I, I guess fix that essentially, like because um, it feels it to me. It feels too weak. That note and it being like the resonance, it feels way too weak. And oh, then okay. if I add vibrato, it would like kind of fall off just a little bit. And so I'm, I'm like trying to be a little self conscious about that. I guess. No, 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 I get you. Like, and that's what I'm saying, you know, everything ain't for everybody. So, <laughs> so when you're singing it, because I can't see you, like, I just want to make sure that you're actually breathing on the note and not holding the breath on the note. I think that's what I'm saying. I want vibrato there. I just don't want it to go, Mistress Ma, and you're holding it. So that's what, when I'm saying vibrato, I'm not saying I want to go, Ma, I'm not saying that. I want it to be, Mistress Ma, I want to feel the breath moving through the note. And right now, I feel like the breath is holding the note. And you know, you understand what I'm saying? That makes a lot of sense. That makes a okay, lot of sense. Okay, good. Okay. Mistress mine, where are you roaming? Better, better, yeah. better. I and I think even if, I'm sorry, go ahead. I think you saying uh, the difference between like holding the breath, that what it sounded like that, that really, that really clicked. That's the thing about all of this, you know, with master classes, voice teachers, you always have to find somebody that will speak your language or someone that can try and figure out a way to explain something to you in a way that you'll understand. So sometimes you can say stuff and 
people will be like, I don't know what that means. But then somebody says the exact same thing, but in a different way, you'd be like, oh, that. <laughs> so you gotta figure that out. So I would love to hear the last page one more time. And like even that mistress, Ma, when you're singing it, because what I really love, a lot of times people don't sing the note before the high note and you sing it beautifully. But I think I want you to not give so much weight to mistress mine so that it's just a little bit lighter so that when you get to the to the mind, even though because it, it says mezzo piano, so it you'll have some place to go, and that way you don't have to give too much sound on the G, but enough where it has that flow and keeps it going. Because because it's mistress mine, where are you roaming? Trying to get to roaming. So uh, let me hear the last verse one more time because I have a few more minutes, and then we'll hear that. Okay. Uh, so it's uh, what is love? From what is love? And the same thing of what is love? Relax and think of less. What is love? Tis not hereafter. Present mirth, not present laughter. But to come me still unsure. In delay there lies the plenty. Then come kiss me, sweet and twenty. Your stuff will not endure, not endure. Mistress mine, where are you? No, no, I'm gonna tell you the reason why that kiss came out funky, because when you were doing this, it's because you're so used to singing like that with the with with you know with more strictness in it that because your your neck was slightly out of alignment, the your your breath was used to always working through that 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 tension. And when that wasn't there, it was like, hey, that's something different. Let me <laughs> he's he's not he's not the same thing. So there's, of course, there's the Alexander technique where it teaches you to line yourself up, have your head aligned with your uh, your neck and your spine and everything. And you want that. You want to have that line. And you have you have a very good, but I don't want it. It doesn't need to be tense. So I want you to have that alignment. And so me telling you to move all of this stuff is really about relaxing your body. And then once you've gotten your body relaxed, you can add back into your Alexander technique of standing up straight presenting, you know, where your body is completely aligned so that the breath can flow completely through you and easily through you, but you have to do it without tension. But I think you have a beautiful voice. I am so excited I got a chance to hear you, Jude. Thank you, thank you very much. Yes, but just think of that. Think of just, I think that's my main takeaway for you. I want you to think, just relax your body and don't physicalize your high notes or your movements. If you don't do that, then everything will, kind of click into place and then the breath will uh, flow a little bit better. All right. All right. Thanks, Jude. Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi. Hello, Miss Jackie. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm Jackie Hickman and I will be singing Ate by Giacomo Puccini. Wait, just...
Jackie. It's been so long since I've heard you. You sound beautiful. Thank you. Proud. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is what I want to say. What I find really interesting is that, you know, um, my daughter's around the same age as you are, and I've seen a lot of kids sing and everything. I'm very taken by the fact that both after you and Jude, that you all really connect to your music. That, you know, a lot of times you see young singers and it's that blank face of like, I don't know what I'm singing. I don't know what's going on. And you guys have really, you can tell that you really put in the time because singing is not just about singing pretty notes. It's about communicating um, the text and communicating a feeling to people. And, and I received that from both of you. So I want to put that out there and really say, I really appreciate that. Great job on that. Cause you know, it's, it's grown folks singing in, in the opera that don't do that now. So <laughs> great job. Okay. So what I want to work on with you is I want to get the temp, the tone, just a little more height in the tone and a little more roundness. Okay. So at the beginning, yeah. Oh, quanto io tamo quanto. So I want quanto, na quanto. So if you can like even think of like maybe just taking like taking your two fingers and just putting here so that the voice stays, so it doesn't spread, but stays. Da, 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 so that you think of the sound and the space that you're making for these notes are going up this way instead of this way. Okay, so let's try. So I want o, o quanto tamo, o quanto. That was great. But then when you say in, because that's the hardest part. In a, all of those are nice spread vowels, just in general. <laughs> That's just what they are. So the o cuanto, that was beautiful and it had this round quality to it. And then it went, in me, in me forte. So still think of it in the same space of always having, always having the space for like an ah or a ooh in your voice, I mean, in your, in your mouth, but having your tongue do all the work to make the e, the e, the e, you know, where the tongue is high enough. Yeah. Where you have to e, no, e, e. So, so let's start that again and, and think of that because you did it perfectly. Oh, you came in and that all oh, was gorgeous, gorgeous. Get to a di stringer a tia, tia. So have that space because you're going to go a tia. So you got to have that a in there. So tia. And don't move your tongue as much to go from e to a. It's kind of hard, but you can do it. Okay. Uh, can we start from uh, di stringer in di stringer ti? Keep make sure that, that all is nice and round. And mio, mio. ready for it because <laughs> the music just came on me. not me me more height in that e sound
mia vittoria, o oh mio tesoro, o oh bene a mio, oh mio sol pensiero, e dammi un bacio e il mondo intero, e mi farai tutto obbligar, e dammi un bacio e il mondo intero, e mi farai tutto and tell me <laughs> very 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 good you were rocking until then and then the me came out like <laughs> back <laughs> no that was beautiful uh, sometimes uh Intiero. something and, and i and i can't put my finger on it something and i don't know if it's just the way the music is written it sounds kind of spanish the way you're singing it and a little less italian okay I can't, I can't put my finger on it just like on this first, you know, hearings and stuff, but, and I don't know if it's the way, but I mean, intiero, it's, of course it sounds, but it's something I was like, it sounds more Spanish than Italian. So, so you can work that out. That's a separate situation, but no, but that was good. Very nice having that line to go up and come back down and still keeping it supported. But when you come back, me just because it's a it, it, you know it, and the thing is if you look at that that me it's really coming on the tail end of a day crescendo so it doesn't need to be me you know me father okay so where can we go back to where can you um i have the like the beginning of the omnia vittoria yeah i think that's good gotcha But you kept that, it, it sounds more round already. And you're not doing anything, you know, trying to, you know, I don't see any tongue issues going on. Like you're doing it. It's just thinking that height in the back of your, of your mouth, having that, like if you're taking a breath and you go, and you feel all the air on the top of your soft palate and keep that soft palate up there, not tension wise, but just getting yourself relaxed enough to go, da, 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 da. So that you have that space to sing, and it keeps it nice and round, and not. Let's do that part again. I think what'll help you, cause you're doing it. You don't need to give that much M cause I, it'll stop, one, it'll stop your sound. It stops your breath. And you want to just keep it going. So you want to keep that as smooth as possible. So that M you don't have to. You don't need too much. And, hold on. and also make sure that you have in that, because it's a long phrase of sitting on that A and then going up to that D, which is in the passaggio. So when you take your breath for that A, know that that D is coming and have the space for that A. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll give you the same note I gave Joe. Imo, Imo. It's just, just you ain't got to scoop up to it because it, it's more work. It's more work. <laughs> Keep it simple. <laughs> you got it though. You know what I said. Be 
my day for you. Okay. Give me every note that you're going up. I don't want you to put more weight on it. It should be is. But what you and I'm going to over exaggerate in what you're doing. You're going. You don't need to, it doesn't even say to, to get louder, none of that stuff. So like a lullaby, mm -hmm. like a lullaby, you know, just sing it very easy. It's a, it's a very simple line, but deceiving line, because, you know, I say going to that passage is always tricky, mm -hmm. but happy birthday. It's happy birthday. Nice, Jackie. You gave me exactly what I wanted. You could still give a little bit more voice, but I liked it better. Mm -hmm. I liked it better. It just was a little more, it, it was more lined up. You kind of pulled off of it a little bit too much, yeah. but it's, but it was still better than, because you, you know, it doesn't need to be uh, so declamatory. It's just, it's very, dame un bacio il mondo intier. Very nice, very nice. Let me see. Um, let's go back to the uh, to the beginning. I want to hear the beginning again to see if we remember what we talked about. My new thing for you is when you're finishing your phrases, I want you to, the thing in Italian is that there's stressed and there's unstressed vowels. And at the end of majority of the time, the last vowel in Italian is not stressed. And so one thing I want you to think about is a, oh, tanto. It's a, un tanto, where you come off of it just a little bit. Where, because I think it's mio or desir. Let me see, let me see. Where was it? It was an e vowel that you, especially when you have your e vowels, watch that you don't punch that last note. Because I know what's going through your head is like, okay, I need to get off this because I need to breathe for the next thing. Mm -hmm. So, in thinking of that, relax and, do, and just know that you're, the breath is going to be there. I mean, granted, you're singing with a track, which is not the most singer-friendly thing in the world, because if you were playing, if you had an accompanist with you, you could take that breath and they would feel you and they would come in with you and you'd have that total security. But the one thing with the track is it's always the same. So once you've heard it a multiple of, you know, multiple times, you can sit there and say, 
okay, I, I know that this is when it's going to come in. So I need to kind of prepare myself to, to come off of this note just in enough time so I can breathe. So in going like like a sigh, like even though it's a, 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 um, a half note, a sigh, I don't want sigh. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think that you need to look at. Let's, let's go from, where can you give me I want to hear Doc, uh, Date Così Lontano Io Sofro. Because mm -hmm. I got two more minutes. And I think I can hear that. Because that's the one with my evals. It. Sofro asahai ne pacio trovo mai. That's what I wanted. Thank you very much. Yes. So, so think of that, those unstressed syllables at the end of the phrases mm -hmm. to not punch them. That was great, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I never heard the song either, so it was great. <laughs> there we go. My camera. Scared me for a second. <laughs> Hi, Samantha, how are you? Great, how are you? Good, I'm excited. Hello, my name is Samantha Poppy, and today I will be singing Love's Philosophy by Roger Quilter. Okay. The fountains mingle with the river, and the rivers with the ocean, joins our path lives forever with a sweet emotion. Now, what I'm going to ask of you, we're not going to turn our track back on. Okay. We're going to sing this song slower than it's written. Because I want to, because I think there were time, and, and this is a pretty fast little song and it has, you got to catch in there and stuff. So I, there were a couple of times where the notes kind of fell off. Because again, just like I was telling Jackie, you were just like, I got to get back in there. So I want to hear every note. I want to hear every note legato. I want to hear every note as beautiful as I know you can do. So I want, so can you sing it without the track? Da, 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 da. Just in a nice slow tempo, I wanna hear it nice and legato. Give me the first lines. Okay. When you're ready. The fountains mingle with the river and the rivers with the ocean. The winds of heaven. I'm gonna say right there. 
the ocean was beautiful. But then when you sang the winds, the winds was not dead center in that pitch because you're so used to going, the ocean. So let's take it slow again. Start again. At the beginning? Yes. Hold on. In fact, I'll give you an E. Let me get my little trusty phone piano out. You got to love technology. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Da, da, da. The fountains mingle with the river, and the rivers with the ocean. The winds of heaven mix forever with a sweet emotion. Keep on. <laughs> You're doing good. Nothing in the world is single. All things by your law divine in one another's be mingled. Why not I with thine? Not I with thine. Keep going. I'm hearing all the notes now. <laughs> Mountains kiss high heaven, and the waves trust one another. No sister flower would be forgive if it disdained its brother. And the sunlight clasps the earth, and the moonbeams kiss the sea. What are all these kissings worth? If thou, if thou kiss not me. There you go. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so now we can get to work. All right. So at the beginning, I want to tell you the same thing kind of I told Jackie. You have a lot of, so you, you have that backspace. I can hear it in, da, 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 da. but what's happening in the front is that you're smiling when you're singing a lot. And so when you're smiling, it gives the spread sound here in the front. Like I said, I know the space is already, you're already making the space in the back of, you know, in your soft palate. So I want you to literally, you know, not to be conscious of not, the mountains mingle, the mountains mingle. Just, and it's not like positioning your mouth in any type of way. It's just dropping the jaw is, it naturally would drop without you forcing it or doing anything, but not mingle. Because we, as Americans, we speak like that. See, I'm speaking to you right now. You know, it's like, so. The mountains mingle at the river. I don't know the song either. So, but you know. <laughs> So I want you to do in da, 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 which I have to say, beautiful, because most people can't ocean. Very nice. Thank you. Who does? Okay, so let's let's start the beginning. You can. I want you to. Uh, I want to sing it again without the tape, and I want to hear it uh, again. So here's your E. And at the same slower tempo. Yeah, same tempo. The fountains mingle with the river, and the rivers with the ocean. The winds of love mix forever with a sweet emotion. Nothing in the world is single, all things by a law divine, in one another's be mingled. Why not I with thine, not I with thine? Okay, I don't know what you just did, <laughs> but you sound like a different person. <laughs> Holy Christmas. I'm sitting there like, that was beautiful. Thank you. Okay, let's keep going. Um, here, let me give you an F. Okay. Same thing. See the mountains kiss high heaven, and the waves clasp one another. No sister flower would be forgive if it is its brother. Okay, this is what I do want to fix. Um, when you give, it's the same thing, and I think it's because it's in your head because it's also fast. 
be forgiven. Stay on the vowels as long as you can. Cause when you stay on the vowels, it's beautiful, but, but you're cutting it off. Cause I know you're like, you know, you got to get to, if it's distinct. So uh, do it again. See, see the mound, just kiss the heaven. Forgive. Yeah, yes. Say on the, give, give me some, some voice on, on forgive and then come on. It'll be there. You can take your breath. There's time. Okay, let's do it again from See the Mountains. See the mountains kiss high heaven, and the waves clasp one another. No sister flower would be forgive if it is dead, its brother, and the sunlight clasps the earth. And the moonbeams kiss the sea. What are all these kissings worth? If I, if I kiss not me. Beautiful, Samantha. Okay, let's let's try and turn on the tape and see what we can do. Can you remember that feeling and sensation of how you're singing? Because the thing is, when you sang it for me just now, it was a calmness to it. And even though this is a bubbling brook up under you, even though, how do I say this? When people write fast music or things that have this agitation, yes, you want to give that because that's what the, the composer is kind of, you know, putting out there for you to give to the audience. But the only way you can do that is if you are completely centered. You can't go along with like, okay, well, this music is fast and dumb, and I'm going to be like this. And, 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 and. You can't do that because then you're not, you're not on your breath. You're not supported. Like what you just gave me was beautiful. Beautiful. The first time you were like, I'm about to get through this. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so I want you to, I want you to, when you sing it this time, I don't care how fast that tape is playing, you still keep that centeredness of thinking that line that you just had here and the space and the not spreading to keep that and don't be afraid. It, and I don't care if you come in late for an entrance, I don't care. I want you at this point to really sing the ends of these phrases. So, and then sing the beginnings of the phrases when they come in, okay? okay. Do exactly what you just did, just a little faster. Okay, you got it. <laughs> The fountains mingle with the river, and the rivers with the ocean. The winds of love mix forever with a sweet emotion. Nothing in the world is safe. I got it. Do the beginning for me one more time. And you, and the thing is, what I want you to do. What's happening is that you're not singing those those beginning opening notes. When oh. you sang it for me before, you sang everything because it was slower. But even if it's faster, the mountains, the mountains, me, the mountains, me, the mountains, the mountains, me, the mountains. It doesn't matter how slow or fast it is. You know, breathe with the thinking of the sound, the the vowel of the. When you take your breath. The mountain spring, so that you, when you take that breath, uh is already in your in your body. So then, when it's time to actually vocalize, the voice just comes, and you sing those pitches because you're you're getting the mountain me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The mountains mingle with the river. And the rivers with the ocean Breathe. of love mix forever with a sweet emotion. Breathe. The world is single, all things by a law divine. In one another's we mingle, why not I with mine? Not alone. You were good until in one another. In one another, you need to, like I said, for each one of these, it's one of those things which you just have to think ahead with this song. You have divine in, wait, divine in one another. In like, it, cause like even the breath you take there, it should not necessarily be like a, a let down up break, break breath, you know what I mean? So 
Uh, all things in the Lord divine, in one another, be made You know what I'm saying? So it, so don't make the, it's a, it's a breath you need, but don't make it a, all divine, in one. So like you have to reset. Keep, keep that, keep your rib cage, your intercostal muscles still kind of out and already in that expansion. So that all you got to do is just drop and just go, so it's there so it's not letting down and coming back up okay let me see if i can find where that was <laughs> yeah i know this is so hard okay let's see all things by and by divine in one another's being why not i with mine not i with mine yes yes keep going in the mountains kiss my left, and the waves just one another. No sister flower would be forgiven if it is dead, it's brother. I want to fix that. Let's go back to the second verse. Because no sister is different than the first time. Because the first time you got, you got like a little uh, uh, eighth rest or a sixteenth rest. So with this, um, and the waves class one another, no sister. I want no sister. I want you to sing no sister. Sing the no. And it's the same thing of no, the, no sis. Same thing where I said where don't collapse the breath. Don't collapse your body to take the next breath and start back up again. Same thing with no sister. Let's go back to see the mountains. Okay. Oh, okay. Not too late. No. See the mountains kiss my left, and the waves just one another. No sister flower would be forgiven if it is dead, its brother. And the sunlight casts the earth, and the moonbeams kiss the sea. What are all these kissings worth? If I want to, I just want to see something. I want you to sing the beginning of the song for me. I just want to see something just real quick. Okay. With the track or without the track? With the track. Okay. The waters mingle with the river and the rivers with the ocean. The winds of love mix forever with a sweet emotion. Nothing in the world is single. All things by a Lord divine, in one another's being mingled. Why not I with mine? Not I with mine. See the mountains kiss high heaven, and the waves trust one another. No sister flower would be forgive if it is dead, it's brother. The sunlight clasps the earth, and the moonbeams kiss the sea. What are all these kissings worth? If Okay, I want to give you a compliment. You know, um, something that is very hard, and it's something that I always still work on. It was what I said with Jackie about the unstressed syllables. I mean, that applies in English and in every language. You very beautifully come off your phrases at the ends of phrases, um, which is very hard. You know, you know, sometimes people, you know, you you know, you have to take a breath, but you. You you have that musicality grace. Stick with it. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. So let me see. I wanted to go. I thought that was very beautiful. It's getting much better as far as like not sounding. Because the thing is, all of this is is the you know the fountains and the babbling brooks and all of this, all this up under you. And it's the feeling that's inside this person's soul. So 
I want you to feel that when you're singing and I see it in your face, which is great. That's why I wanted to just look and not look at the music and see what was going on. Now, when you're with the high notes, like the sweet emotion, like when you're doing that E vowel on that E, which is lovely in the passaggio, a uh, sweet emotion. I want you to think more I in that sound instead of E. Okay, so they can give it a sweet emotion. So it has just a little, I just want you to have a little bit more height in the sound in the sweet, because everything else is really nice. It's like when you, I just want you to keep that in there. So let's try it one more time. Okay. Time, so many times. Okay. I want to fix that too. Really get up to that. Cause don't you're because it's because it's fast. You're going rivers with the rivers with the so still. I really want you to say do that for me. Do it one more time. The sound went out. Your sound is gone out. I don't know what's going on. Was it doing that earlier? No, no, no. Do it. Do it again now. It's back. Okay, we got the smile back. Yep. Okay, let's do it again from the beginning. And I want to hear rivers with the ocean. Wait, wait, your sound's gone again. I don't know what's going on. Is it just me that's hearing it? Say something, Samantha. Oh, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Go ahead. That's weird. Yeah, it is. Samantha I laughed because I sat there and I was like is she gonna apply what I told her the first time the second time and you did <laughs> yes I sat there I was like is she gonna da, 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 da? and she did I'm like all right y'all are some smart little cookies in this little studio I, somebody tells you something and you listen and that is the one thing I have to say that that will serve you well the quicker you pick things up the more you can learn so when someone tells you something and, and it's working for you, now granted, there are going to be times where people are going to tell you stuff and you'll be like, that did not work for me or it hurt my voice or, you know, you take that and you throw it away. But things that are kind of working for you and to, if you apply it to other things, then the next time you come into a coaching or a masterclass or a voice lesson, that's fixed. That's moved on. So then you can work on something else because even me, as many years as I've had in my career, there's still things that I learn all the time. And so when I go into a coaching, I have to listen. I sit there and I'm like, okay. And once he's told me something, I'm like, okay, let me apply it to this that's coming up later. And you did that. So beautiful job. That, that was gorgeous. I, I don't have anything else to say. That was wonderful. I'm glad you did that again. It was night and day from the first time you sang it to that time. Fantastic. Great. Thank you so much. No, you're more than welcome. 
Fantastic singers, what a great job. We're giving you a big virtual applause. It's so hard to hear the response from the audience, but I know we all really enjoyed. And Nicole, thank you so much. Wonderful insight for these students. I know it can be difficult just in general doing master classes with students you've never met, but you know, thank you for bearing with us in the virtual world. <laughs> Fine. Like I said, the only time was that look like it was Samantha. The sound kept going out. Was it just me or did you all no, hear that? No, that was happening. And, you know, oh. we need to make the million dollar uh, software that allows for these things to happen for musicians, you know, online so that we can continue to work with people from all over the world. Uh, I am going to invite the rest of our students to turn on their cameras and join in the conversation here as we are going to wrap up today with a, a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Um, our students have been working remotely all year, but are all studying privately with our awesome, let's shout out to our teachers, Hector Vasquez, Alicia Johnny, and Christopher Michelle. We love you guys. Thank you so much for the amazing work. So uh, not all of our students were able to be in the class today. So we do have seven here with you. So I'd like to open up the floor, see if anybody, and just go ahead and wave your hand Oh, Brianna, you are fast. You get the first question. Um, hello. Okay, ah. so when I was reading through your description on the master class agenda, I noticed that you performed in countries like Germany and France. And I was wondering, when you perform in countries where the first language is not English, do you learn their language in order to feel more comfortable? Or do they have English speaking people who can translate for you and possibly others? Well, um, for me, I was pretty lucky because when I was a child, I learned French starting in third grade. So French, when I started working there, that was easy. German, I did not know. But the thing that's very different from America than it is in Europe, you will find people that speak multiple language, languages there. And especially in opera houses, they know that they're going to be getting, like say, if I go to do an opera in Germany, I may be the American, there may be someone from Spain, someone from Russia, someone from England, someone from Germany, it, from everywhere. The entire cast will be completely international. And the one language that will unify them is English. So a lot of times Americans get off easy because we can go and somebody in that company will speak English to you. Now you're on your own when you're out in the streets, <laughs> going to a restaurant or anything like that. So it is good to learn your languages. I, I would totally recommend um, studying your languages and getting, because one, it's more impressive when you do go to Europe and you have these languages under your belt, you can go into a rehearsal if your director is in Italian. And if he wants to run that entire rehearsal in Italian and you can keep up and understand what he's saying and communicate back, it makes the process easier for them. And so therefore they'll be more accepting. But either way, if you come in and don't know any Italian, they'll sit there and they'll still explain it to you and talk to you because you know, you're, they know that you're a foreigner in their country and they want to help. But it's always best to know the languages if you can. Thank you. You're welcome. Go ahead, Sam. Uh, I really love when you were talking with Jude about like, Kind of being like a bobblehead and like i've used that in my lessons as well but i had a question about it like how do you convert that into when you're performing because you mentioned obviously you can't you know do all of that when you're on the stage so how, how would you go about like converting that into a more performance appropriate uh, position well you don't necessarily convert it into a performance situation it's strictly for when you're rehearsing and that's what practicing and rehearsing is for so that when you're if you consistently sit there and like okay i'm just gonna make my head loose and i'm gonna sing and and rehearse like that eventually you'll get to the point where you you can stop this and still know that sensation of the relaxation and then apply that to a performance situation. So it's about practicing it that way. And like I said, you don't wanna do this because that really puts you out of alignment. It's just really subtle and just like, okay, I'm just like your jelly. You wanna be jelly. And so, but support it, and support it jelly. <laughs> so you want that. And then once you've gotten that and you've rehearsed it enough, and that's the thing about singing. Once you, your body knows your muscles and its memory, once you get that into your muscle memory, then you can slow all of that down. You can just open up your mouth and it'll come out and it'll be looser. And you're like, oh, I'm not, 
using my arm, but like the more you sit there and like, if you do this, like when you're learning stuff or you got little ticks, those ticks will show up in your performances because of muscle memory, same thing. So you're just doing the opposite, trying to teach yourself not to have tension to do it. Thank you, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Supported jelly. Supported jelly. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> um, I also, along those lines, one of the things I heard you say that I think is really important to remember, especially as our young singers are taking on, you know, this repertoire that they hear so many older singers sing all the time. Um, I loved when you said it's like happy birthday or a lullaby. Could you just elaborate a little bit more what you meant by that? Because I think it's really important for them to, to make that correlation. I think a lot of times when people think opera, they think hard. And opera is not necessarily any harder than anything you hear on the radio or um, it's just, it's, it's, you're using a different production style to produce it. So a lot of times when people, like what, what when Jackie was singing, you know, she was like, Mondo, you know, you know, it was like, it had, it's like, no, this is just a simple line. It's a simple, you don't have to make it any more complicated than it already is. And it, and, to, and when you think of happy birthday or think of a lullaby, those are things you can sing in your sleep. Those are things that are just easy to you, that come to you, that you've been singing since you were two years old. So it's this, I want you to have that thing of saying, this is music that I can just sing as easily as I would sing that and not making it more complicated than it is. Such a good reminder. Any singer at any age can just remember that, right? Like, it's oh, yeah. not as hard as we, we try to make it be for ourselves. Awesome. Who else has some questions? We have just about two minutes before we'll say goodbye. So we wrap up with another couple of questions. I'm going to call on folks. Okay, there we go, Nate. He's ready. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nate. And um, I was wondering if you've ever had a, a point in your career where um, you lost any of your confidence. And um, if so, how did you get out of that kind of state of mind? Yes. Um, I did... Uh, my very first Countess in the Marriage of Figaro, and it was in France. And I had been singing Susanna in Figaro for years. I knew Figaro backwards and forwards. So I made the transition and I worked on it for like two years. And I went to France and when I got there, I was singing next to the girl who was singing Susanna. And it was this, I felt she was out of tune the entire time. I felt she was flat when we were doing stuff that was in you know unison and i was sitting there i was like oh i said she's she's having a rough time over here but it turned out it was me singing sharp and i didn't realize what had happened was you know and i'm not sure if you all are aware of this but usually in america when you do most operas the frequency you're singing at is at 440. that's the orchestra is tuned to that that's what you do that's what I learned the marriage figure on that's where i had been singing susanna on for a decade when I got there, I didn't realize they were doing it at a Baroque pitch, not even a, a quarter, a half tone, but a quarter tone lower. So when I was singing, I had, my body was completely prepared to sing and support and knew the pitches at 440, but everyone else was singing at 430 and I was singing at 440. And they didn't tell me, I, I, I literally, because I'd sang it forever and I knew those pitches in my body, just like I say, muscle memory. I knew those pitches in my body. And I just thought it was somebody else. And, and they didn't tell me until dress rehearsal. They were like, yeah, Nicole, you're singing sharp. And I was like, how, or I said, where? And they were like, a little bit of everywhere. And I was like, well, wait a second. I said, well, how long has it been that way? Well, pretty much since you arrived, six weeks ago. No one said anything to me. So I went out and got the worst reviews in my life. Every reviewer said I was out of tune and it devastated me because I was like, I put in two years of work and I lost all confidence in myself. I really did. I mean, I would go to jobs and then just be like, how did that sound? Was it in tune? Because I was so nervous about it. And then I finally had to say, I have to take control of myself. If I have that much of a problem with it and I'm worried about pitches, I'm going to record myself and I'm going to make sure. And so then it took a long time for me to get confident back in myself, but I had to control that myself. I couldn't depend on anybody else. I realized nobody else had my interest in heart as much as I did. So, cause no one told, I mean, six weeks of rehearsal, no one said anything, but I thought the other people were singing out of tune cause I knew Figaro and I had never seen Figaro out of tune, but they were doing it in another key that I was. So <laughs> that's what happened. Wow. That's a, that's a long six weeks for them to wait to say that. 
doctor was a little nervous to say something. She just, she did, she was, she didn't know how, she didn't have that personality. You know, she was one of those people like, I love everybody, let's all get along. And she didn't want to have a confrontation to say, hey, can you fix this? Mm -hmm. So she literally sent her assistant to say it. Wow. Well, you certainly bounced back from yeah. that. You are amazing and such a joy to watch on stage and on camera. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, we're, we're so grateful for your time and your expertise that you've given us and shared with us today. I do want to remind everyone to tune in on January 22nd to watch the Giving Voice concert, uh, which you are featured in. And remind our online audience that on February 6th, uh, Mr. Anthony Roth Costanzo, our countertenor, will be a guest with us. Um, so please join us at 1030 on that uh, Saturday. Um, we're going to say goodbye to the online audience and uh, wish you all a wonderful rest of your January. We'll see you next week, next month, next month. <laughs>